Hi, I am Melanie Zanoza Bartelmi. I am a global food analyst at Mintel. Hi, I am Diana Kelter. I'm a senior trends analyst at Mintel, focusing on North America trends coverage. Um, so about a month or so ago, Melanie and I virtually got together just like this. Um, <laughs> I wanted to chat about a lot of the disruption um, and trends that were happening in, in the delivery space um, for food service and grocery. Um, so when we chatted last time, we talked a lot about Uber Eats and DoorDash and Grubhub um, and how they were really trying to get um, more business during this time because obviously there's a more consumer demand for delivery right now. Um, and we also talked about Instacart really having ownership of d grocery delivery. But now we're seeing a lot of those food service players are trying to get into that Instacart territory. And what we've yeah. seen um, in the past couple of weeks um, is expansion into that space. So Uber Eats announced Uber Grocery being launched in um, some key markets, Latin America, the US, Canada. Um, so really expanding into partnership with local convenience stores, local grocery stores um, to quickly offer some of those um, grocery deliveries. And just last week, DoorDash announced the launch of Dash Mart which is their um, kind of version of a convenience store. So they're also partnering with a lot of convenience store essentials to offer. So like if you need your Advil, if you need um, your Ben and Jerry's ice cream, but also a lot of local restaurant offerings. So if a restaurant has a signature spice or a signature sauce that they bottled, um, that's also gonna be available on Dash Mart. Um, so a lot of changes, a lot of expansion. So Melanie, what um, are your, some of your key takeaways for this? And what are you, what are you kind of thinking about all of it? Yeah, you know, I think that this is a really smart move to try to tap into that space where consumers are looking to really increase their convenience, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, right now for safety, but then also because we're all getting used to this being an option. We're seeing e-commerce really surging and we're expecting that to continue. But um, I think it's also really smart that these companies are trying to pivot as they've both described in their press releases to meet their customers where they are. So whether that is their actual, um, the consumers who get the end products or their restaurants or the uh, retailers that they're working with, they're just trying to make it as easy for them to succeed. And it's nice that they're offering these ability to pull in some of the smaller players, like we were talking about the restaurants. But you know, when you are kind of rushing to meet a new need, there can sometimes be some uh, maybe hiccups. So Diana, I am curious, we both took a look at this, uh, both of these trying to see how it all works. And you know, one of the markets that this Dash Mart is in is Chicago. So we do have that ability to look, but I'm, uh, I'm curious what you think of, of the execution so far. Yeah, uh, so I, I looked it on the desktop version, so I can't speak to how it looks on the app interface, but I know from just browsing it on the computer, uh, it was a little confusing. I think one thing we both agreed on, in particular with Dash Mart, is it's this big new offering. I um, mean, it really wasn't bold on the site, um, like a banner you would expect or something yeah. that really shows the uh, consumer this is something new. It was kind of hidden. There was a picture of a Ben and Jerry's ice cream carton, obviously, which is something they're offering, but then briefly underneath it, it just said Dash Mart. Um, so it really didn't, for someone who maybe didn't read the press release or isn't ingrained in the space like we are, it might have just quickly brushed over that. Um, but then when you click on it, it was also hard to find um, some of the things that we talked about, which I think is yeah. a selling point for their support of restaurants in a brand new way. Um, because I think one thing we saw at the start of the pandemic, a lot of restaurants pivoted to kind of focusing on pantry style items, whether it was like Panera and Potbelly doing actual produce and meat and cheeses, yeah. or some of these more local restaurants really offering what's unique to them, their signature spices, their signature sauces. Yeah. Um, and I had to scroll quite a bit just to find Little Goat's a restaurant here in Chicago offering their spices. It took me a while to find that. Um, another restaurant here in Chicago, Parsons has their sauce in there, was at the very bottom. So I think they should have had a unique category almost like restaurant, yeah. special restaurant things. So I think that's one thing that people are really going to find value in from this Dash Mart offering is that it's still supporting restaurants in a very unique way. And I think that's where people would gravitate to this, um, giving their support to this. Um, yeah maybe versus a different delivery service that isn't offering that. So I do agree. I think there were some navigational things that really need to be worked out to make the value clear to consumers, to really show them that we're offering something unique and we're going to, you know, make this valuable. I talked, um, we talked about together before this, 
how there's a convenience store model that's really taken off here in Chicago called Foxtrot. And they really started expanding even before this year where delivery services were surging. Um, and they have brick and mortar locations throughout the city. Um, and they offer the kind of a blend of food service slash convenience store offerings. Um, so they have wine, they have beer, they have a lot of local type offerings. Um, and it obviously comes at a premium price. And I think before this year, the delivery component of it maybe felt like not necessary for a lot of people, but we've really seen that even take yeah. off. Um, and, but there's a value to it. Maybe you didn't think you wanted wine at your dinner. You have a last minute social gathering and no one's used to having plans anymore. So that could come in handy because you know you're still getting a premium thing um, last minute. And I think one thing we talked about with this new service um, of DoorDash and Uber Eats kind of offering convenience store essentials, does it have long-term viability? Because right. um, convenience stores are traditionally, you go for a quick one-stop pickup. It's not the same as like getting your full grocery order for the week um, that you might do with Instacart. So even though right now consumers are more likely to turn to delivery to avoid being in stores and having that interaction, um, convenience stores aren't really known for that type of delivery. So how do you think or what do you think would be a more long-term approach for these delivery services to really engage in? Yeah, I think that's a, a great point because, you know, like you're saying, there really needs to be something that differentiates between you know, waiting for something to show up or saying, you know, probably these things are coming at a premium. So do I really want to wait 30 minutes for Advil that's going to take, you know, for a dollar mm -hmm. ninety nine delivery, things like that. Yeah. So, um, I think that that is definitely going to be what's difficult. And as you were saying with the, the Dash Mart, it'd be so cool if you could also, while you're ordering these convenience foods, also add some actual hot, ready for you um, items from some of the restaurants, because it kind of seemed like that restaurant connection was going to be stronger and it, it wasn't really there. You still have to do those separately. So that would be something that could maybe drive some of that long-term viability for some of these new services. But you know, we've also been looking at the expansion of, of drive-through, of mm -hmm. people using that those services. You mentioned to me that Wawa has uh, created a drive-through option, and you know, this isn't convenience food in the same way, but Shake Shack is announcing that they're going to be doing their first ever drive throughs so they're really seeing some of this you know, things that were always one way changing, and it's not necessarily only going to be the delivery, only going to be the e-commerce. Um, like we said in the last video that we talked about, um, it's going to have to be really user friendly, especially for people in the suburbs or people who are not already using things like delivery to really make this stick with them. So I think that there's there's still a learning curve for some of these services. And, you know, I, I do appreciate, as we said, this pivot means that things come up quickly. But I think that there's going to need to be a lot of maybe iterations of things to to see what's working, to see what's sticking with the consumers and really listen to that feedback and make sure that this is something that really is serving those consumers that are going to be using mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I think you make such a great point talking about the drive throughs and how that's also an, an area to kind of focus. And I think that more broadly speaks to how brands and services right now have to think about innovation because a lot of the innovation focuses on being forward thinking, relying on technology and all this, these cool trends, which are really great and need to be focused on. But I think a lot of what we've seen this summer is a lot of the things consumers have responded to are a lot of nostalgic things. It's yeah. Drive-ins, drive-throughs, simple like summer walks. And so I think as brands think forward, they also need to think to the past and what do yeah. they know, what are they familiar with and how can that be brought in to a more familiar, more current model. And I think, as you mentioned with Shake Shack, their drive throughs are trying to bring both um, to together. So their drive throughs is gonna have a lane specifically for app orders. So they're really taking mm -hmm. the classic model and modernizing it. And I yeah. think that's where we're gonna see brands really have to focus on the bringing the past to the future in a really unique way. I think that's a, a brilliant thought. And makes me so happy that we had the opportunity to chat about these again. Okay. And now we'll plan to check in next time we hear something along these lines and see how some of this is doing. Yeah, sounds good.